all praise God. Welcome to our broadcast this morning. It is so great to have you join us. Um, it is always an honor to share the word of God. And it is really indeed um, a great comfort and encouragement that we can receive from God's word. Hallelujah. I wonder if we can just bow our heads in a brief word of prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord, O oh God, for, Lord God, the assurance of your word. O oh Lord God, that your word brings comfort, your word brings strength, your word brings hope, your word, O oh Lord God, brings faith. And I thank you this morning, O oh God, that as we share your word and as we hear your word, that faith will come to the heart of every person, Father God, that is under the influence of my voice and under the influence of this broadcast. I pray in Jesus' blessed name, O oh Lord God, that you, O oh Lord, will anoint my vocal cords, Lord God, to declare your word this morning, Father God, to your people. I pray, Lord, that your word will flow steadily, Father, undisturbed, unhindered in the name of Jesus. I thank you that your word, O oh Lord God, is quick and powerful, and it will, O oh Lord God, accomplish the purpose whereto you have sent it. In Jesus' blessed name, I pray this morning, O oh God, that you'll bless this time of fellowship that we have. For your word says, O oh God, that where two or more are gathered in your name, there you are in their midst. So we thank you for your presence. We acknowledge your presence in our lives, O oh God. And we just want to thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, who paid the price for us, O oh Lord, and has brought us into fellowship with you. In Jesus' blessed name, Father God, we thank you for your precious word. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to begin in Deuteronomy as a foundational scripture to our message this morning. Deuteronomy in the 8th chapter. And I want to read from verse number 1. And the title for the message for today um, would be, You are what you eat. You are what you eat. You become what you eat. Amen. Now, from verse number 1, we're going to start reading now. Every commandment, this is Moses speaking to the nation of Israel, and he says to them, Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. Those are four key words that I want you to underline. Um, he says, You must be careful to observe that you may live. The word, first word is live. The second word is multiply. The third word is go in. And the fourth word is possess. So Moses says, he says, you must be careful to observe that you may live. The word live means, it means to be revived. It means to be nourished. It means to be preserved. It, mean, it means to be quickened. It means to recover. It means to repay. It means to restore. It means to save. It means to to be made whole. The word multiply means to become great. It means to become numerous in number. And go in, it means to enter. It means to be carried in. And to possess means to seize and to take hold of. So this is what Moses is saying. He's saying every word that I command you today will cause you to live. It will cause you to multiply. It will, it will carry you in to the land that God has sworn to give to your fathers. And lastly, it will cause you to seize, take hold of that land, to possess that land. And you shall remember, verse 2, and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. I like that. When God leads you, he doesn't lead you halfway. God is a God who doesn't, he doesn't begin something and stop. He is faithful. He's a faithful God. And Moses says, he led you all the way. So God will take you all the way. No matter where you are this morning, God will lead you all the way. Moses says, the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you, to know what was in your heart. Underline that. Highlight that. In your heart. God is so concerned about your heart. He says, whether you would keep his commandments or not, whether you would keep his word or not, the most important thing 
to God in your life is his word in your heart, his word in your spirit. Praise God. And he goes on to say in verse 3, So he humbled you, God humbled you, allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna. So you see, God allowed them to hunger, but he didn't leave them hungry. He fed them. Hallelujah. And fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know. I want you to highlight this. That he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. But man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. That is what God wants you to know this morning. That you do not live by what goes into your mouth. You live purely by what proceeds out of the mouth of God. You live by the word of God. Why? And I shared with you just now that God is so concerned about your heart because it's in your heart where the word of God should abide. The Bible says that out of the heart flow the issues of life. So whatever you fill in your heart, that is what's going to happen in your life. Whatever is happening around you, whatever is happening in your life, that's happening purely because of what you've allowed entrance into your heart. So you've got you've to guard your heart, guard the door to your heart. Be careful what you allow entrance into your heart. Hallelujah. Now, th this is the thing. Moses says that man will live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What he was saying is, man will be revived by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You'll be nourished with every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word from God will preserve your life. So it doesn't matter what's happening around you. The word of God is your preservation. The word of God will protect you. The word of God will quicken you. To quicken means to give life to. In other words, wherever you are, it may be a dry place where you are this morning, but the word of God can bring about rivers into those dry places. It can bring rivers in your desert. Praise God. The word of God will cause you to recover. In other words, if there's stuff that you've lost in your life, God's word will recover that for you. The word of God is everything to you. Praise God. It will cause you to recover. So whatever you've lost, maybe... You may be old now and when you look back and you consider your life, there's so much that you've lost. But God says, I will restore to you the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm and the locusts have eaten. So the word of God will cause you to recover. The word of God will cause you to be restored. It will restore every loss that you've had in your life. The word of God will restore your life. Praise God. The word of God will repair all the breached places. There may be places in your life that are broken deep down inside. Not everybody knows what's happening in your heart, but God knows what's happening in your heart. And the healing for your heart, the only thing that can mend your heart, the only, the only solution to your problem in your heart, to your spirit, is the word of God. Praise God. So the word of God will repair your broken heart. The word of God will restore your broken, your broken heart. The word of God will save you. Hallelujah. The word of God will save you from harm. It will save your family from harm. Praise God. And the word of God will make you whole. So God is saying to you this morning, be made whole by my word. You must understand, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, you must understand that the word of God is not ordinary. It is not like the word of man. God's word is supreme. You must understand that God's word is, a supernatural in origin. Hallelujah. In the book of 1 Corinthians, um, hallelujah, praise God. 1 Corinthians, and I want to read from the second chapter and verse number 14. Paul says to the church at Corinth, he says, but the natural man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one, 
For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, praise God. By the word of God, you receive the mind of Christ. Your thoughts are changed. Your life is changed by God's precious word. I was sharing with you how God is interested in your heart. And when you hear the word of God, the Bible in the book of Romans chapter number 10 and verse 17, Paul writes to the, Rome, the, the church at Rome and he says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, when you, when you hear the word of God being preached, when you allow the word of God to enter your ears, into your heart, faith is imparted to you. You must understand faith is a supernatural gift given to us by the Holy Spirit. In other words, the same spirit who wrote the word of God, who inscribed this word, is the one who ministers this word. And as you allow this word entrance into your heart, the Holy Spirit imparts to you supernatural faith. Praise God. It's because you must understand this, that the natural man cannot receive this. He'll never understand this. But a man who's been born again, a man whose spirit has been born again, has been reborn by the Spirit of God, will understand the Word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. In the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10, and I want to read verse 38. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Who's the just? The just are those who have been justified by the blood of Jesus. Amen. The righteous, the blameless, the faultless shall live by faith. That means faith to a born again believer, faith to a child of God. Faith is, it's not just, it's not a lifestyle because styles come and styles go. Faith is life. It's a way of life. You become a practitioner of faith. Hallelujah. The, in other words, you begin to practice God's word by faith. Whatever the word prompts you to do, whatever the word commands you to do, you begin to act in accordance with the word of God. Hallelujah. He says, the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Hallelujah. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition. We are not of those. In other words, you get those who draw back. But he says here, we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. The word of God will save you. Hallelujah. Hebrews going into chapter 11, verse number 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is substance. Faith is... Faith is that which resides within your heart. Hallelujah. That's what faith is. That which resides within your heart. And brothers and sisters in Christ, faith, faith is now. The word there is now faith is the substance. So faith is now. And we serve a God who is a God of the now. Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. He doesn't change. Faith is now. And God wants to do a work in your life when, not tomorrow. He wants to do a work now. Receive it by faith. Hallelujah. And this is the thing. When you receive God's word, you receive the supernatural gift of faith. And it's the supernatural gift of faith that allows you to flow in the miraculous. Let me share something with you from the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 10. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Acts chapter number 10 and verse number 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, while Pete, what was Peter speaking? He was speaking the word of God. 
while Peter was still speaking the word of God, whilst he was speaking the, these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. When you hear the word of God, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, friends, things can never be the same. Everything changes. He, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of motion. He's always moving from the beginning. We read in Genesis, he moved over the waters. And I believe right now in this hour, the Spirit of God is moving. He's moving and he wants to do a work in your life. That's why he's giving you the word. Hallelujah. Allow the word entrance into your heart. Praise God. The Bible says the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word and those of the, of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. When you praise God, when you, when you hear God's word and you receive it, when the Holy Spirit, you know, connects with your spirit, you know, all of a sudden, you begin to feel like Elizabeth when she heard the salutation of Mary, the mother of Jesus. When Mary entered Elizabeth's home, the Bible says that Elizabeth says to Mary that when you greeted me, the babe within my womb leaped with joy. And that is what happens when you receive the word of God in your spirit. Your spirit all of a sudden changes. You no longer become the same. Hallelujah. Because the word of God is sweet. It's sweeter than honey, and it will add sweetness to your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. When you look in the book of Acts chapter number 14, uh, in the account of Paul uh, preaching at Lystra, Acts 14 and verse number 8, the Bible says, And in Lystra a certain man, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This guy was born crippled. This guy never walked a day in his life. So this man was sitting. This man heard Paul speaking. What was Paul speaking? Paul was speaking the word of God. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as this man was hearing, faith was coming. And if that's you this morning, you've got to keep on hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God all of a sudden will enter your spirit. It will connect with your spirit. Once it connects with your spirit, then the word begins to move. And this guy all of a sudden, he was receiving word, receiving word. And faith began began to well up on the inside of him. Every time you hear the word of God coming, you begin to get a faith image. The word, the word all of a sudden gives you a different picture, a different sense of direction for your life. And this man began, he was hearing, and Paul, looking at this man intently, he saw that this man had faith to be healed. So Paul said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Hallelujah. What, what healed him? It was the word of God. The word of God, if you have fallen in your life, the word of God will pick you up. Praise God. I'm reminded of Peter, the account of Peter. When um, in the middle of the night, the Bible says that the disciples of Jesus, just after having fed the multitude, Jesus went alone to the mountain to pray. And he said to his disciples to get into the boat and to go to the other side and he would join them. Now in the middle of the night, these guys were in the middle of the sea, the fourth watch of the night. And in the middle of the sea, all of a sudden, the Bible says that, you know, the wind began to blow. And Jesus began to walk towards the disciples. Now Jesus was walking on the water. Hallelujah. And as Jesus was walking on the water, the disciples saw him and they were afraid for they thought he was a ghost of some kind. And, you know, and as they were afraid, um, Jesus says to them, he says, do not be afraid, it is I. And then Peter responds. 
You see, when the word comes forth, the word provokes a response from your side. So Peter responded and Peter says, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come to you. And the Bible says, Jesus said, come. So the word, the word told him, come. And Jesus and uh, Peter got out of the boat. He stepped out of the boat. So maybe that's you this morning. Step out of your comfort zone this morning. Step out of your natural. Step out of your normal. Hallelujah. So he stepped out of the boat. The Bible says he began to walk on the water. And as Peter walked on the water, the, the wind began to blow and it became boisterous. So Peter took his eyes off Jesus and he considered the wind, he considered the waves. And what happened? The Bible says he began to sink and then he shouts, oh, master, save me. And then Jesus rebukes him. He says, why did you doubt? Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Don't doubt God this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, that may be you this morning. Maybe you've been looking in the wrong direction and all of a sudden you find that, you know, it looks like you're about to drown. But praise God, when you look to the word of God, you can say, Lord, save me. I receive your word this morning. When you reach out to the word of God, the word of God will pick you up. It will pull you out. The word of God will save you. You will not drown. Praise God. Now this, I want to... I want to close with this thought. Why did all of a sudden the everything, the environment around Peter, why did that change? What, what caused that change? You must understand that Jesus was walking on the water. So what does that mean? Jesus defied the law of gravity. And when Peter stepped out of the boat, he too, defied the law of gravity. He defied the natural law of gravity. What does gravity say? Whatever goes up must come down. Praise God. The word of God will not cause you to come down. Peter looked to Jesus, looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So as Peter looked to Jesus, he did not sink. He walked on that water. And all of a sudden it became boisterous. Why? It's because Peter was breaking out of the natural and breaking into the supernatural. You must understand whenever you receive the word of God, this is a supernatural word for your life. Whenever you receive the supernatural word, this word causes you to break out of your natural. It causes you to break out of your normal and break into something that is abnormal, to break out of the common and break into something that is uncommon, to break out of the natural into the supernatural. And whenever you are about to break into the supernatural, you find that all of a sudden everything around you becomes disturbed. So there's a disturbance. So don't look at the disturbance. Don't look to the left. That's what uh, the Lord said to Joshua. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. But look at the word. Meditate on my word. Speak my word. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I believe God is telling you that in this hour. That don't look what's happening around you. Forget about what's happening around you. Because even, listen, whenever you take a step of faith, you're going to provoke, you know, something in the natural. You may even find people will get disturbed. People will get worried and troubled. But the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that you belong to a supernatural class of people. Hallelujah. You, you are separated unto God a royal priest to the holy nation. That is where you hail from. So quit trying to fit in with the rest of the world. You were never meant to fit in. God, God purposed it so that you will be a misfit. That's why you find many people say, but oh, people don't understand me. You don't need, people should never understand you. God understands you. The word of God understands you. The people of God understand you. Hallelujah, praise God. Do not try to fit in with the crowds. You belong to a supernatural class of people. Praise God. You are a peculiar a, a peculiar person. Hallelujah. Praise God. The supernatural is your portion in Christ Jesus. Amen.
because you were born not of the will of man, nor of flesh and blood, but you were born by the will of God. You were born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I believe that this morning, that is what God is saying to you. You know, this maybe you've been looking at yesterday's manner, and the word manner means, what is it? So whatever it is that you need for your life, this is your manna. Hallelujah. God has fresh manna for you every day. Amen. For everything that you face in life, it's all in this word. Go for the word of God. Hallelujah. And get faith to help you. Praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 says, We've received the spirit of faith. Hallelujah. I want to close with that scripture. Let's just go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, what did Jesus say to Satan in the desert? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4. And since we have received the same spirit of faith according to what is written. I believed and therefore I spoke the words of David. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. Praise God, praise God. Don't speak what you see, speak what you believe. I speak what I believe according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I trust that you've been blessed this morning by this morning's program. And um, I, I believe that you've been touched. If you've been touched by this program, please connect with us. Share with us. Tell us what the Lord has done in your life. Uh, we really love to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests. Send us your testimonies. It is so awesome to have fellowship with you. And we thank God for you. And in closing, I would just like to close this morning by leaving with a blessing. So if we can just bow our heads as I release the blessing of the Lord this morning. The Lord bless you, child of God. The Lord keep you in the palm of his hands. The Lord God of heaven and earth cause his face to shine upon you, his servant. Upon all the works of your hands, the Lord God of heaven pour out from heaven the rivers of his grace and blessing upon you. The Lord God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, the Ancient of Days, cause the glory of his presence to be upon you, his child, upon your house, upon your home, upon your heart, upon your life. The Lord give to you the fullness of his shalom peace, life, fullness, peace, all the blessings of his love, in the name above every name, in the name of Yeshua Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Light of this world, the glory of Israel, and the Lion of the tribe of Judah, in Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people said, Amen, Amen, praise God, praise God, Hallelujah. This is Pastor Ricardo, until next time, saying, I love you very much, we pray for you. And we thank God for you and keep walking by faith. Amen. Praise God.